Hello, everyone. So we have good news. Progress is being made by our lawmakers. More and more are supporting a fourth round of stimulus checks for millions of Americans. So today I will be going over all the details in this video. I also want to share how President Joe Biden's Social Security plan could affect you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. I will always bring you up to date on the latest stimulus check in Social Security news. The winners of this past Friday's $75 Amazon gift card giveaway is Billy Lester and Jalon Michelle Newman. Congratulations to both of you. This coming Friday, I will be giving away another $75 Amazon gift card. To enter the giveaway, all you'll have to do is subscribe to my channel, share and like this video, and leave a comment below. Thank you so much, everyone. So let's go over what is currently happening to Social Security. It is no secret that the funds of Social Security uses to pay benefits are running low. This is very concerning. This is why multiple lawmakers in Congress are proposing new plans and bills that aim to fix the program's solvency. According to CNBC, changes to Social Security need to be made so that those receiving Social Security benefits do not lose money. I know many of you are planning for your retirement. According to CNBC, you may want to make adjustments it is possible that there could be cuts to Social Security retirement benefits, and that would be really terrible for millions of Americans. Joe L. Saucer is a founder of Covism, which is a Social Security claiming software company. L. Saucer said, when you're looking at all of these what ifs, the adjustments you make now in order to plan for something later are much smaller. To that end, Covism has developed a calculator to help consumers and financial advisors gauge just how impactful any Social Security benefit cuts could hit their bottom line in retirement. To be sure, benefit cuts are not a given. Just about one year ago, the Social Security Administration released projections indicating its trust funds could be depleted in 2035, at which point 79% of promised benefits would be payable. To fix that shortfall, experts say to expect some changes. It is possible that benefit cuts are coming, as well as potential payroll tax increases or a combination of both. Back in 1983, when President Reagan ushered in the last major Social Security reform to fix the program's then ailing finances, changes included gradually raising the retirement age 67 years old and imposing some taxes on benefits for the first time. CNBC says, Covism's new calculator helps advisors evaluate Social Security claim decisions. I definitely suggest trying out the calculator. The calculator can stress test clients' plans against benefit cuts and other negative scenarios such as poor market performance or negative health situations to see if their plan would still be okay. Please do let me know in the comment section below if you have used Covism's new calculator. There are millions of Americans that are relying on Social Security to pay their living expenses. It is a big problem that in the coming years, Social Security is expected to owe more money in benefits than it collects in revenue. Currently, Social Security's primary revenue source is payroll taxes. But given that unemployment has been rampant over the past year, it's likely that the program took in a much lower level of payroll tax revenue in 2020 than its trustees were counting on when they had made their prediction a year ago. This all means Social Security's trust funds could end up running out of money much sooner than 2035. It is great that our lawmakers are aware of this problem. Just last week, Republican Senator Mitt Romney reintroduced a bill last week called the Trust, which also is known as the Time to Rescue United States Trust Act. The bill aims to address the revenue shortfalls faced by Social Security and other federal programs that are relying on dwindling trust funds. The bill would create bipartisan rescue committees that would be tasked with implementing changes to extend the program's long-term solvencies. I'm truly happy to hear that lawmakers are working on this really big issue. President Biden has already proposed reinstating Social Security taxes on workers once their wages exceed $400,000. Right now, those taxes only apply to wages of up to $142,800. But lawmakers in trying to save Social Security, may impose extra Social Security taxes at a lower earning threshold or increase the Social Security tax rate on wages so that even lower earners could lose a larger chunk of their income to payroll taxes. The goal of the trust bill is to ensure that Social Security remains solvent. Lowering benefits could solve that goal just as easily as raising taxes. So what do you think, everyone? What do you think our lawmakers should do? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. 
It is now up to President Joe Biden to listen and take action for the American people. Thank you, uh, Jen, and it's, uh, it's good to see you all um, uh, again. So uh, I wanted to just provide a little bit of context uh, around, uh, in particular, capital gains uh, taxes. Um, and we'll provide just a little bit of context and then happy to take a couple of questions. So as you know, and as uh, Jen has uh, spoken about, the president uh, is excited to this week um, lay out his plan to invest in American families. Um, it will be a plan that will provide critical support for children and families and in, by doing so, critical support for our economy uh, by boosting labor force participation and future economic competitiveness, making among the most cost-effective measures to boost our long-term economic strength uh, that we know of. Um, and the President will also outline ways to offset the long-term costs of those investments by making reforms to our tax code that reward work and not just wealth. And one element of this reform uh, will be to change how we tax capital gains. Uh, and as you all know, that's income from selling stocks and other assets uh, for taxpayers that make more than $1 million per year um, in income. So I want to start by reinforcing who this change will actually affect. Um, this change will affect taxpayers making more than $1 million a year. Uh, in 2018, three-tenths of 1% of tax filers made more than a million dollars a year. So I want to start by underscoring this in simple terms. This change will only apply to three-tenths of a percent of taxpayers, um, which is not the top 1%. Uh, it's not even the top one half of 1%. Uh, we're talking about three-tenths of a percent. That's about 500,000 households uh, in the country that we're talking about. So for the other 997 out of 1,000 households in the country, uh, or the other 150 million uh, households in the country, this is not a change that will be relevant. It won't change their, uh, the tax treatment of capital gains at all. Um, and this makes sense because for the typical Americans, most of their income comes from wages. So for people making less than, uh, less than a million dollars a year, about 70% of their income comes from wages. Uh, but for those making more than a million, for the top three-tenths of a percent, it's the opposite. About 30% of their wages come from uh, uh, wages. Um, and that's probably actually an understatement since the wealthiest can often strategically avoid reporting this type of income uh, entirely. And so as a result, this is, this is the provision that since 2000, if you look at the 1,400 tax filers, um, those are people making over $60 million a year. That's the, uh, for those of you keeping track, that's the top 1,000th of 1%. That is the end of the video, everyone. I hope you found this video helpful today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to enter the $75 Amazon gift card giveaway by subscribing to my channel, sharing and liking this video, and leaving a comment below. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a very, very blessed day.